This is Daniel from Ophidia and I. You're listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. Where are you guys at? So I'm in Reykjavik. Reykjavik in Iceland. Right. So that's yeah, like the, that's a big city over there, right? Yeah, it's 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 basically the only city. Is it really? It's like uh, half of the population, like Iceland is total, like 350,000 people and like roughly 200,000 are in Reykjavik. That's funny. So my yeah, son, my cool. son went over there after college just to uh, I guess they stayed in hostels and went around. He absolutely loved it. OK, nice. nice. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a very easy country to maneuver around. You know, it only takes you like 10 hours to drive like a circle. Oh, really? Across the whole country. Yeah. So like it's and but there's still like lots of stuff to see and stuff. So yeah, I imagine it's, it's awesome to see. What's travel. the uh, what's the metal scene like over there? I mean, I've seen I saw that that movie Black Metal. I think that was recorded over there a few years. Oh, back. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, that was there. Yeah. Totally. What's the, scene, yeah. what's the scene like over there? Is it pretty robust? Uh, yeah, I think it's, it's starting to get pretty robust right about now, because like, uh, although there, there have been like metal bands going since, you know, just mm -hmm. since everywhere else, like mid eighties or something like that. Right. Uh, there was like a pretty booming death metal scene, early nineties, just, uh, in conjunction with, uh, Entombed and all of what was happening over in Sweden. Right. So, uh, that was sort of like a foundation that everything else has been built upon, but there hasn't really been like a proper boom in metal until then, like 10 years ago, I'd say. Then like uh, bands such as like Solstavir and uh, right. Skalmult and, and some other like uh, bands started to get some proper recognition. Yeah. Uh, there was a festival going here for a number of years, Eistnaflug, which uh, garnered some attention as well. Which uh, like, so a lot of industry folks came over, you know, and were exposed to a lot of the bands here. And uh, in part due to that, like the black metal scene in Iceland, like got pretty heavily recognized for a while. Right. So like, yeah. So like a lot of us other bands are riding on the coattails of that whole thing. So uh, I'd say, yeah, like now we have like a lot of bands that are starting to be like pretty revered and uh, like household names all over and are like building upon Right. You know, their names and touring and stuff like that. So that's pretty great. But that's still like relatively recent for us, yeah. I'd say. How yeah. has the uh, pandemic affected you guys over there and the music scene? Has it been bad there as well? Or did you guys escape some of it? Well, it started pretty early on here because like, uh, you know, that uh, that ski resort where like a number of cases were reported back in uh, like in Austria, like mm -hmm. uh, a year and a half ago. A lot of Icelanders were there like uh, just skiing. Right. So they came back with with COVID like pretty early. So like some restrictions were implemented, you know, pretty heavy ones for a while. Uh, then like last summer was pretty good. We managed to have like an in a window there where like spots were basically open. The country was on lockdown, like the or like closed. The borders were closed, but uh, like we were able to do shows and stuff like that. So it was that was a pretty good summer, but. Uh, for the most part, though, it's it's been pretty similar to how it has been everywhere, everywhere else in the world. Yeah. yeah, it's it's just not much going on at all, really. But uh, but, you know, we can't really complain, I'd say, because like in terms of our population, we still haven't like we weren't hit particularly bad. Right. Like, for example, now, like a lot of like a large portion of the population has already been vaccinated. And like they're expecting everybody to be vaccinated like end of next month. So and that's probably going to happen. At least the numbers are that's awesome. That. Beautiful. Yeah, that's, get, that's, that's pretty good. Yeah, we can get back Absolutely. to life. So let's talk about the band. For those mm -hmm. not familiar with you guys, can you give us the two second uh, elevator pitch? Yeah, two second, not <laughs> totally second. Not. Sorry, not second. Sentence. <laughs> <Yeah>. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, Ophidia and I is like first and foremost just a technical death metal band. So that's just the uh, sort of just the, uh, yeah, the starting point of it. Well, we've been like a band for a number of years, like upwards of 10 years, but uh, went on hiatus after like the first band, after the first uh, album and like went on to some other bands and doing some other stuff in music, then came back together a few years ago and started working on this album. And we set like a, we 
set like a pretty uh, set this bar high where we wanted to buy, be like extremely technical but still like rely on musicianship and the songwriting like for the most part like and try to utilize those like technical aspects as like as ways to get those you know Ideas. those songwriting skills and like further yeah so uh yeah and it's like with this album like we i think we managed to achieve what we like set out to do like we we worked really hard on it and spent like our yeah we spent like uh, a year just like rehearsing it like before we recorded it and right. just like fine tuning all of the uh, all of the aspects of of the sound stuff like that but uh, but yeah it's like a very technical death metal band yeah okay so desolate the uh, first album on season of myth I, i'm season god i can't speak today desolate the first album on seasons of mist um that's coming out july 16th i'm, I'm i think red yeah right? exactly yeah um yeah. What's it like trying to, there's a couple part question. First, how do you feel about it? And are you satisfied with the way it turned out? And second, how did the season of mist come, come about? Yeah, well, like firstly, uh, we, like, we took our time with, with the album. Like we, we weren't really in any sort of rush to like finish it or like do, or like get it out there as soon as possible. We really just wanted to make the best possible album that we could do. Right. And uh like i speaking for myself personally like it was like the biggest reward in terms of this album was just like finishing it and listening back to it and be like really content with how it came out like just really happy with it and just couldn't care less what anybody else would think about it because i was happy with it so uh so yeah i'd say like we're super happy with how, how the result came out but uh about season of mist uh like our manager ula garrett Uh, he was uh, like it's a guy who was uh, like an industry stable whom we've been in touch with for mm -hmm. quite some time, and uh, he basically sort of took uh, took reins when it came to like uh, getting the album out there and and uh, discussing uh, like the methods of the release and where to do it and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, he had really good experiences with Season of Mist, and we like uh, two of the like Simon and Ragnar. From Ovid and I are also mm -hmm. in a band called Hellfro, which is signed to Season of yeah. Mist as well. Actually, I spoke to them a few last year or the year before, right? Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Ah, cool. Yeah, nice. Yeah, and they like they have like super good experiences with Season of Mist as well, and they were really excited about the album and just the mm -hmm. band as a whole. So it just made total sense That's... to just do it with them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So and like awesome team. Yeah, so, uh, we do a lot of work with them, so I 100 agree. So when you're a When you're writing your albums, I mean, they're so technical. Do you write this album for the, I mean, the song for the song's sake, or do you write the song for like how it's going to come across in the live setting? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, makes perfect sense. Uh, we, you could say that we, we don't really think at all about how it will result in like a live setting. At, at least not that I recall was that like uh, part of our, discussions about any of of the aspects of the song so the songwriting itself uh, we mainly just like uh, when we approach the song we try to do it like pretty differently from how we've done it in the past and how we do it with other bands where like we uh, maybe just started off with like uh, like a chord structure like a chord idea or even just a melody like a guitar melody as you can hear like all over the album And sort of just like worked from that and tried to have everything sort of uh, like, you know, grow from that particular just small right. minute detail. And like with that came like a like a better sense of just the songs as a whole, like because you're always looking at just the uh, just the whole thing. Like you're not just working on this riff and have it like make sense to go into the next riff. Mm -hmm. Where, whereas that can that totally works and works for a lot of bands. But that's that also gets a bit tired, like after a while, because, you know, you're just stacking riffs upon riffs upon riffs. You know? Do you find it difficult with that being said, then do you find it difficult playing some of those songs live because there are, is so much going on? Uh, you know, they're they're tough songs. They're difficult songs to play right. for sure. But uh, but that was a big deal of how we wrote the album as well. It'd be like if if we started to write it like uh, just and record a demo of it 
that was initially how we like started with all of the songs. Uh, but then we went into like the rehearsal space and played it with Raki, the drummer, and ha had him like put his input and spin on it. So we like rehearsed every iteration of all of the songs and like fine tuned the details like in the rehearsal room, rehearsal mm -hmm. space. Right. And then we came back to the computer and like made a new demo that we thought like makes sense. So we went like back and forth like that a number of times. And like as a result, like a lot of a lot of the sections like uh, sort of like became just muscle memory, essentially. Right. But but they're still like really. Yeah. But oh, yeah. Still, they're tough songs to play for sure. Absolutely. So do you guys have any professional training or educational training in music or are you all self-taught? Uh, we're all self-taught for for the most part. Uh, I went on to some studies just later, like, uh, and uh, and did some stuff uh, in in like at like a college level, mm -hmm. but that was just just building upon what I had like accumulated myself in right. terms of music. Uh, but but like we've also, I'd say like most of our of our like uh, knowledge in terms of music just comes from like doing it a lot. Right. You know, we've all we've all done like even though we're like all relatively young and stuff, we've done like quite a lot of music like uh, combined. You know, right. so like we have we have like a lot of experience and when it comes to like writing stuff and and working on it. Okay, so skipping <laughs> to the lyrical content, then is there a message or something you want your fans to walk away from after listening to an Ophidi and I record? Uh, not particularly like the uh like the music itself was was the main focus during the whole making of the album and that was like uh, what we were we were just trying to make the best possible songs throughout and the uh the lyrics and the vocals as said like came about afterwards basically sure there were like sections where we figured like the vocals are supposed to do something like this or something like that you know but that really we didn't like dwell on to those things until like later on uh, in terms of the lyrics themselves, like I wrote all of the lyrics and they're mostly just like some personal experiences and stuff like that. And just use a lot of allegories and, and go into some, you know, some like fantastical elements, right? basically just through that journey. And in my mind, like a lot of those lyrics were set like on Iceland, basically, just mm -hmm. on the highlands, like among the harsher parts of the okay. nature and the terrain in Iceland, but still in like a, like a parallel verse of sorts where it's yeah. like, where like a number of other aspects going on as well. If, if that if that makes sense. I think so, the, uh, I think the cold and the, the harshness yeah. up there. Yeah. And even in those, I guess, Northern Scandinavian countries like Finland produces yeah. some of the best metal ever. Yeah. You yeah, guys have, you guys have like a, uh, a little niche up there and I don't know if it's because it's dark all the time or or what happens yeah. but maybe there's something in the water but you guys put out some you know not just Iceland but you know you've seen it yeah. the old Scandinavian thing is well known for all that metal yeah totally totally that's right it's like a, a very long-standing culture doing this sort of music and like maybe like a lot of it just comes from like thinking back on how we made the album because most of it was rehearsed and demoed at uh, Rakis place just at his house he has his drum kit just set up in the living room just nice. no dinner table just a drum kit that's all you need and yeah and like that's sort of like rural suburban Reykjavik basically mm -hmm. so like if if you're stepping out of his house you're just looking at just vast like grasses of green and and right. and snow if if it's winter so and inspiration like yeah yeah but so like if if we're, if we're thinking back on how how everything basically works here, like during the winters, and the winters are pretty long and usually rather cold, then you just you just stay indoors. Yeah, <laughs> and, right. and if you go outside, you just you're like you're doing a particular activity. You know, maybe like if you're lucky, you're going on a, like a snowmobile trip or something right. fun. You know, but usually you're just indoors and you're just. Yeah, maybe working on some stuff in music or, or just doing most of nothing, you know, <laughs> it just, yeah. yeah. Maybe that's like a part of what, why it, it does well for Scandinavians because they it, just stay inside. It might be because there's definitely uh, there's definitely some kind of magic. I wish we could bottle 
and send to the rest of the world, you know, because yeah, yeah, really good bands come out of there. Um, what do you guys yeah. have plans for uh, in support of the record? Are you doing any sort of touring or any sort of live streams or anything like that? There's nothing like that planned right now, but uh, but uh, you know, at the moment we can basically just work with what we have, like what's at our disposal right now. So like we're we've made like a lot of digital content which we'll be releasing like to coincide with the release and uh, a lot of that sort of stuff playthroughs you know some interviews yeah. behind the scenes stuff of the making of the album stuff like that so and hopefully you know as soon as it's possible we'll be able to just get out there and and do some tours you know we're like really excited to get get the music out there like physically and get yeah. some like yeah some physical feedback it's a little bit different releasing the record, right? Because normally you, the cycle is you release it and then you hit the road and now you're going to release it and have to do all your stuff online. It's kind of a, yeah. the, mu the music business has sort of had to redefine itself a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's very strange and it's, it's hard to know what to expect, you know, and it's also just, you know, I've, I've had like a lot of people ask me like, yeah, so is it like going well with, with, with releases and stuff like that? And I'm like, Probably. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's I, weird. I think so. <laughs> and a lot of bands, a lot of bands and record labels are going to the non-traditional release. So they're doing like a single a month or a single every six yeah. weeks rather than do a full album. I don't Absolutely, know how yeah. I feel about that, but I know people like yeah. my son, that's their thing, right? They want to just one song. It keeps their attention short. What are you yeah, guys planning yeah. on doing? Are you guys going to follow that model as well? Or are you going to just stick with the whole desolate? Uh, for this album, it's just going to be like the, the album a full release. release, a proper yeah, release. Yeah, 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 yeah. But like uh, a lot, we're like really happy with how all of the songs came out. Uh, like, like all of us feel like that most of the songs could just be singles in and of themselves. Right. So like we've discussed doing like videos for all of them and doing like doing something for every song, like something proper. We could do that, which is sort of like a middle ground. From <laughs> yeah, just releasing absolutely. Releasing the singles and the album. But uh, but yeah, that's 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 something we've been discussing as well because the market is definitely changing and and how people are consuming music. But but still, it's there's something really like satisfying about doing yes. like an album. I'm old and, school and I agree. Yeah. I want the album. I want to look at the artwork and you know yeah. find, find out where it was recorded and who played on what and all that shit. Totally, I agree. I agree. Yeah. I'm I'm that way as well. My son, you know, he's 19. He does not feel that way. He just wants to go to Spotify or iTunes, download one song and go about his business. Could care less about the, yeah. all the time because you spend a lot of time sequencing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a whole art in itself to make the album flow yeah. once yeah, you have totally, your songs. Totally. Done. They're missing that totally now because it's just, you know, yeah, one, one song on a playlist. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And it, it's also like if you if you find a single, like a band that, that's, that's releasing singles and you listen to a single and you like it, and it's like, yeah, that's sick. I'm, I'm, I want to check this out. There's nothing else to check out. No, <laughs> it's just this single, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I know. So that, that, that's also pretty like. <laughs> yep, I'm an old school fan. I want the actually, I want the vinyl, but I'll settle for yeah. you know, digital full download or whatever. Anyway, before yeah, yeah. we go, did I miss anything you want to cover? Uh, no, I, th I think you told on all, all the points. That's, that's yeah. I had, I went through my list. So I just want to make sure we had uh, what you want to cover. Yeah. That was awesome, man. Awesome. awesome. Man. Good luck with the record, and hopefully we'll see you on this side of the uh, the world one day. Awesome, man. Right, Looking forward well. to it. Thanks. See you, Bye. man. Bye-bye.